a millionaire. What a fabulous night we had last night. It was an absolute ripper. And tonight, well, we're back and we welcome back our celebrity teams playing for their chosen charities, hopefully going all the way to $1 million. Let's meet our superstars tonight, and they are and none bigger than this man, media and music legend Red Simons, comedian and Logie-winning actor Stephen Curry, and one half of Will & Woody radio host Will McMahon. Good on you, guys. Welcome here. Some say the key is in fastest finger first is to get there, to get into the hot seat faster than anybody else. I reckon a couple of our contestants might have thought, I'll get two nights on the telly out of this. And that's exactly <laughs> what they've done. I'm going to wake up to what you blokes are up oh, to. That's tragic. All right, first oh. crack of the million dollars. Let's play fastest finger first. The fastest contestant to hit the right number gets into the chair first up. All right, let's go. You ready to go, boys? Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire fastest finger first? Here's the question. Put these TV shows in order from least number of seasons to most. Least to most. A, Faulty Towers, B, Absolutely Fabulous, C, uh, The Simpsons, D, E, R, Least to Most. Least to Most. I've got it. Got it? You got that? I've got it. There's a lot of swearing under the breath over there, Red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the person who is the fastest to get the answers in the right order will play for $1 million. Here is the answers first up. So, Faulty Towers, absolutely fabulous. Then ER, and of course the Simpsons have been going for over 30 years. Let's see who got it right. Red, Stephen and Will, all of them got it. Stephen Curry, look at that, 4.81 oh, wow. seconds. Let's go, buddy. That was very, very sharp. Thank you. Very, very sharp. Who are you playing with? Uh, I am playing with my brother and very good friend, Bernard Curry. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Millionaire Hot Seat tonight, Bernard Curry. Hey. Hello, Ed. Hello, Bernard. Hi, Stephen. Look at you two boys. Fantastic. Let's meet these two. First of all, Stephen, a regular face on Australian screens for over 25 years. Well known for his iconic role as Dale Kerrigan in The Castle and his award-winning performance as the King, Graham Kennedy, in The King itself. He starred in The Cup as Damien Oliver, Hounds of Love and Cloud Street are just some of the great movies and shows that this man has been a part of. Congratulations, Stephen, on a tremendous career so far, buddy. Thank you, Eddie. And in fact, I've shared the screen with you many times, <laughs> haven't I? <laughs> you played Eddie Maguire in Mr Black. I and did. And you were probably the top three um, Eddie Maguires I've ever seen on screen, I'll be honest. <laughs> and you were in The Cup as yes. well. You played Media Puzzle. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> well, thought, sorry, you, sorry, 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 sorry. You played, uh, what was his, Eddie Maguire? That's right, yeah. Um, <laughs> which again, I think was up there with some of the best I've seen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I think I'm being typecast, though. I think you are. As myself. And, and don't forget, are. I was in the castle as well with you. Was your car in the castle? That, that is a great trivia question. Here when Dennis Denuto finally became yep. the very successful lawyer, <laughs> that was my car. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Rob Sitch and Jane Kennedy rang up and said, uh, did you just get a new car? And mm. I said, yeah. And I said, can we borrow it? We're doing a movie. They said, yeah, it's only going to take a couple of days, and that was it. There you go. Dennis Donuto's car. Were but you the yeah. only one they knew with a Beamer? Is I think that... at that stage, right, yes. Okay, <laughs> that right, was right. it. Hey, uh, that's now. Stephen Curry. Let's meet Bernard. He's an actor. He's a writer. He's a versatile leading man known for his long-running roles in Wentworth, Neighbours and Home and Away. His US oh. credits include roles in NCIS, CSI and Pretty Little Lies. What a great show that was. <laughs> and that's not all. He's a talented presenter, singer and guitarist. And he's with us now. Bernard, your international career flies a bit under the radar as far as us knowing over here in a yeah. lot of ways. But you've got a great body of work in America these days. Yeah, my wife Sonia and I decided to just take the plunge and we had just had a, a, a baby, so we decided to go to LA. That seems smart, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Um, mm. And we spent almost five years over there. And, uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to, to get good roles in a lot of these sort of big things. And, um, and I felt like the career was going well. But then the opportunity came up to come back and play Jake Stewart in Wentworth. And that was, we decided to come back there. Yeah. So, you know, we had it five years. Over. It was brutal, I'm not going to lie. It was pretty tough. But, but I had a good, fair, fair level of success over there, yeah. Mm. 
doing a fantastic job and uh, thanks for everything that you do. For so many charities, let's talk about the one you're involved in tonight, One in Five. Now, this is something that's very close to both of you. Tell us about it. Yep, uh, we've been ambassadors for One in Five for coming up to 20 years now, I believe. Yeah, almost, yeah. Um, and they do incredible work for uh, research into mental health. Um, it's uh, started by the Wardlaw family, very good friends of ours. They lost their son, uh, Matt, to suicide and they decided not to let that go in vain and started up this charity based on the statistic that one in five Australians will experience some form of mental illness through their course of their lives. And they, they, they're genuinely trying to find uh, a cure, you know what I mean, trying to find a reason, rather than just finding drugs that mask the symptoms, actually finding out a cure for these for these things uh, and hopefully going from one in five to nine in five. Well done, boys. 15 questions will get you a million dollars for one in five. The safe levels are 1,000 and 32,000. And then we want you to go all the way to a million dollars. Three lifelines, ask the host, switch 50-50, no time limit. <coughs> Leave any time with your current winnings, boys. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Oh. All right, 15 questions. The first is for $100. Good luck. A crowd rising up and down in sequence to create a ripple effect is known as a what wave? A, new, B, short, <laughs> C, micro, D, Mexican. They ban this at the G? No. You they tried they to. They, they banned had. people throwing Drinks oh, up yeah, in the yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. okay. Um, um, tacos and, and burritos. Yeah, yeah and yeah. generally look, beer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, we could probably save your time here, I reckon. Can we lock in, lock in D? I think so. Lock in D. Yes. Lock in Mexican wave, correct, for $100. Yeah. Well done, boys, you ready? Yep. Go on in one. Hey! Hey! hey. $200. Hey. A person who reveals a secret is said to have let the cat out of the what? A house, mm. B bag, C car. D hat. Mm. It's good to let the cat out of the car uh, every now and then. Well, if it's been in there for too long. <coughs> um, but um, I think we can probably. I'll leave this one to you, mate. We, you really you good let stuff the like cat this. out of the bag, don't yeah. you? Yeah, and that's the last one you're answering. Say, so lock it in. <laughs> I'll lock it in, Eddie, but it's in it's for bad. $200, correct? There you go. Oh. The bag. $300. What is the term for something ordered by a client, in particular a piece of artwork? A. Admission. B. Partition. C. Commission. D. Transition. Mm, well, I, it's, it's a commission. Isn't it? Oh, it would be a commission. Yes. Yeah, right. There's been a lot of people banging on about stuff when they know the answer, yeah. wasting Eddie's time, just waffling, yeah. waffling, and waffling, and thinking. You think, just answer the thing, just say lock it in, Eddie. Lock in yeah. C commission. Well, I know? did. I did try and order an admission of art once. Did you? How'd that go? Not so good. Mm. No. Um, Let's lock in C commission. commission. All, right. <laughs> All right. Everyone wants their close up, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Correct for three hundred dollars. Well done. <laughs> $500. A traditional snack eaten by spectators at the Wimbledon Championships is what and cream? A. Strawberries. <laughs> B. Cookies. C. Peaches. D. Coffee. Uh, it's That's strawberries. Yeah, lock in strawberries. Strawberries and cream yes, is correct for $500. Yeah, well done. Right. Right. According to the Wimbledon website, official. 166,000 portions of strawberries and cream are typically served at the championships. We'll take a break. We've got 11 questions to go for $1 million. The Curry Boys are on fire. All right. Right after this. All right. Not quite sure whether they've got through dickhead level just yet. Is that right? <laughs> That's what you were saying in the ad break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't we're, made complete yeah, dickheads yeah, out yeah, of ourselves. We, just we yet. Look like dickheads, but not stupid dickheads. Just okay. Yet. So right. is young. Okay. Let's right. get to a thousand dollars, and then you're home. Thousand right. dollars in your pocket. Something for your charity. One in five. Let's do it. A moon is formally defined as a planet's natural what? A spacecraft. B missile. C satellite. D shuttle. Mm. I haven't seen a lot of natural spacecraft in my time. No. Um, I'm working on a blueprint for one. I'll show you that in a couple of weeks. But um, 
Uh, <coughs> I think we can pretty much say safely lock say in. satellite. I think C. Yes. Lock in C. We're all in. It's in. It's correct. You got a thousand dollars. Here we go. Well Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Hey, uh, Stephen. Yes. You look back on the people who built Channel Nine. Certainly, the uh, the on-air performers. People mm. like Bert Newton, mm. uh, Daryl Summers over mm. the years. Yes, but I sir. go back to the King. Oh, the King. Yes. I go back to the yes. King. Tell yeah. us uh, about playing such a, a beloved character, okay. and tell us a bit about Graham Kennedy. What he meant to television and uh, entertainment at that time. I don't think there'll ever be anyone who um, who betters him for uh, talent, for spark, for ingenuity. He was one of those guys who could think on his feet, and and was so. Uh, that's part of part of his genius was being able to. You never knew what was coming with Graham, and um, it was just such a thrill to be able to play him. And, and but that also meant the the stress of actually getting it right was pretty intense because you don't want to stuff up a story like that. Yeah, uh, uh, the castle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a cultural phenomenon. I mean, you know, that, that was pretty early days for me as well, and so it was without a doubt, and still remains the best comedy script I've ever read. Um, but also part of it was just the heart, and you know, that that film is so full of incredible dialogue. But the joy of it for me is the fact that almost all of the comedy is gleaned from how much this family loves each other, and that's almost every family comedy in history is about dysfunction. And that film has such an indelible message about the importance of family and home, and I just, they're just fantastic. Well, mm. you are now 10 questions away of putting a million dollars in the pool room. Okay. And uh, <laughs> let's get Eddie's stuck way of in saying, it. shut up and let's get on with $10, it. $10,000, <laughs> here All it right. comes. Which of these are a type of ham? A splotch, B speck, C dot, D fleck. I was going to say, Bernie, you've got to <coughs> spot your ham on your jacket there. <laughs> That's, um, yeah. uh, no, look, I, I, you know, let's just not beat around the bush. Are you going to? Are you thinking B spec? I'm thinking B spec. It's yeah. lock in B spec. B spec is locked in yeah. and correct for two thousand yeah. dollars. Right. Common variety of Italian smoked or cured ham. The original word comes from the German meaning fat. Right, 2,000 going for four, hmm. and three lifelines in play are in good shape, boys. 4,000. Meryl Streep has appeared in all but which of these movie musicals? A, Chicago. B, Mary Poppins Returns. C, Mamma Mia. D, Into the Woods. Hmm. She's definitely in Mamma Mia. Mm hmm Into the Woods. <clears throat> are you sure? Pretty sure. Hmm. Are you sure? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Got there in the end. Um, Chicago. You can ask me, you can get rid of this and get another question for 4,000 or play 50 50. I reckon we get rid of it. Yeah? No, it's just joking. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Movie musicals. Hey, what, are you, what are you thinking? <clears throat> I'm thinking Chicago. Why? I just don't remember her being in it. But then Mary Poppins Returns, I didn't see. You're a big see fan that. of Mary Poppins Returns. <coughs> no, I did not see it. I have no. not seen that poster on your bedroom wall, I'll no, be honest. No. Um, Meryl Streep has appeared in all but which of these movie musicals? You're thinking Chicago, right? Yeah, I'm thinking Chicago. That's three lifelines. Switch. Turf it. We can switch. switch. What do you think? Yep. All right. Let's Turf. do it. That's gone. Yeah. Okay. What would you have gone for? Go with Chicago. Was Chicago, Chicago was yeah. correct. Switch it out. Mm. All right. Won't be hearing the end of that for some time. No. Yeah. All right. No. <laughs> what is the term for a female horse that is less than four years old? A. Colt. B. Damsel. C. Philly. Mm. D. Debutante. Okay. Pretty easy. Yep. What a thought. Yep. Is it C? Philly. Yep. No, it's. Yep. Lock in C? Yep. I think yep. Lock in C, yep. Philly. Lock in C, Philly is correct for $4,000. There you go. That was a good use of a life. Right. OK. Thanks, Ed. It's a long drive home, and I don't think Bernie agrees. What sort of songs might you be listening to on the way home tonight? <laughs> Chicago? <laughs> Chicago, yeah. It'll Give do. them the old razzle-dazzle. Razzle-dazzle. Right. Razzle-dazzle. Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> <clears throat>
<laughs> like ten thousand dollars. Okay. I got the bloody question okay. right. No, By definition, which of these words describes something that develops slowly but in a harmful way? A interminable. Mm. B inarticulate. C insidious. D intermittent. Uh, I would say interminable is painfully never ending. Inarticulate is them dudes what don't speak good. Mm. Uh, intermittent is stopping and starting. Correct. Insidious is a movie. I think it's insidious. It's insidious. Yeah. Magic words. Lock in C, insidious. Thank you. Correct, $8,000. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Stephen and Bernard. The term derives from the Latin word meaning cunning. $16,000. Here we go. Brothers Michael and Andrew Tierney are members of which Australian group? A. Human Nature. B. Crowded House. C. Jet. D. The Wiggles. <laughs> well, I will take umbrage with B. Crowded House being an Australian group. Um, <laughs> uh, look, it's 100%. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's Human Nature. Yep, it's human nature. So say it. <laughs> Lock in A, human nature. Locked in. Bang! Sixteen thousand dollars. Ah, we're on it here. Yeah. Here we go. Formed in 1989, group consists of the Tierney brothers, along with Toby Allen and Phil Burton. 2019 been inducted into the Aria Hall of Fame. All right, boys. Get set. Next question is for the guaranteed $32,000, and then we're into the big money. Two lifelines mm. in play. The curry boys are hot. Let's come back right after this and oh, play for the big boys. money. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. We are heading to the serious business. You get this, you've guaranteed your charity 32 grand. Here it comes for the one in five charity. Question. Which of these animals appears more than once on Australia's current coat of arms? A. Lion. B. Kangaroo. C. Swan. D. Emu. What do you think? I mean, the coat of arms is on the 50, 50 cent piece, is that right? Yes. Oh, okay. Isn't it? All right. Kangaroo and the emu. Um, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to be lion and swan, but there might be one of those things with those two lions meeting each other. Like on the English, that's, that's the English coat of arms, isn't it? They're two lions. Yes. Okay. So let's. <coughs> let's mm. There could be a couple of swans back there just kind of yeah. milling about, you know. Is that the sort of thing that Eddie would know? I mean, he's flightless. So he probably knows a fair bit about emu. 50-50s yeah. there, boys. Yeah, go to 50-50. Uh, yeah, OK, let's go. All right, let's go 50-50, okay. knock out the two. So we've got a, a right one and a wrong one to play with. OK, two incorrect answers out. Doesn't really help us much, does it? Why would it be lying? Why would, be lying? Why, would, why would the lion appear twice on the on coat of arms? What business has it? It's a ring in. It's a ring in, that's right, but you never know. Because well, you got rid of the two big hitters. Okay, I mean, the swan wasn't introduced, was it? Is that a dumb no, question? It's, it's the native. native. Yeah, yeah. So why would the lion appear twice? It just wouldn't. Okay. That's good logic. Lock it in. Go. Go. Do it. See. Lock it in. See. Red, what would you have gone for in this occasion? Well, as somebody who was born in Great Britain, I would take a guess and say that there are three lions. One, two, three. <laughs> Did you hear him? Then? It's like a shit-eating laugh, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Red, if this was Red Faces, what would you be doing about this stage? Oh, nice. 
We're hitting the gong, yes, thank you. You've got the gong, boys. It is lion. <laughs> boys, it's going to be a long drive home for you tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, you did really well. You oh, got up to well. the $32,000 question. $1,000 each for your magnificent charity, so two grand for one in five. That's where we leave you. All right. It's Will and Red to play next to see who gets into the hot seat for a million dollars. The Curry Boys, thanks guys. Thank, Thank you. Cheers, right. Ed. <laughs>
gave him the four answers. He looked at him and he said, oh, can I find a friend? And I was like, well, shit, you can. But so he calls his dad. The two of them together end up agreeing that the Great Wall of China is in India. <laughs> dad then, thought we were on Millionaire with you. So yeah. he thought we were on TV. Yeah and thought the reputation of the family was going right down the toilet from that moment on. And where it went to next was so, you bring me up to have another trick that's at right. it. That's right. Have a look at this. <laughs> this is really Eddie, is it? It is Eddie Maguire here. Good on you, buddy. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Which one of these cities is not in Europe? Paris, Moscow, Athens, Budapest. OK, OK. Dad, my heart tell me Budapest. Where are you at? Uh, not in Europe. It'd be Moscow. Are you 100% sure Moscow? I've done this before. You've got to trust me. Isn't Budapest in Africa? It's definitely Moscow. Okay, okay. Time's okay. up. Time's okay. up. Okay. Right, Woody, it comes back to you. I'm going to go with what Dad said. I'm going to lock in B, Moscow. You're going to stick with your dad after last time. Amazingly, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Woody. What? Moscow, of course, is in Europe. So it's Budapest. It is Budapest. Budapest is in Europe. Athens? The capital of Greece, of course. It yeah. is in Europe. Paris? Paris is the capital of France. It too is in Europe. And once again, Will has stitched you and your dad up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, the good news is on this occasion, Woody, is that you are on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah. And we don't have an option for you to ring your dad. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come back 15 questions for a million dollars right after the break on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Will and Woody, and then Red Simon's the car. from KISS FM, ready to go here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Boys, here's the tail of the tape. 15 questions, the safe levels, as you know, at 1,000 and 32,000, all the way up to 1 million. Three lifelines in play. You can ask the host, you can switch 50-50. That's there for you to use at your disposal. You can use them on any question you like. You can use them all on one if you need to. No time limit. Leave any time with your current winnings. Are you ready to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, mate. Let's, Let's do it, play. Ed. Go for $100. All right, boys, this is the real McCoy. You're not mucking around in the radio studio now. Basic swimming stroke is the doggy what? A, paddle. B, dash. C, wade. D, bag. Mm. Right, so we're both thinking A, obviously. Yes, lucky style wasn't an option, but yes, I think A, <laughs> paddle. <laughs> but I thought, because it's like freestyle, now I've heard people refer to it as that. But, but can Will, we, can we lock in A? We're going to lock in A. Correct. <laughs> Let's move on to question <laughs> two. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, no, same. Question two for $200. A device for cushioning vibrations in a car's <laughs> suspension what is, is a what absorber? A shock. <laughs> B jolt. C panic. D surprise. Um, it, it's a it's a shock absorber. It's a shock absorber. A shock yeah, absorber. yeah. I'm happy yeah. to I'm happy to lock in A as well if you are. Yeah, let's do it. Lock yeah. in A. I Ed. need a shock absorber after the last answer. <laughs> <laughs> Three for two hundred dollars. Well played. All right. Three hundred. Yeah, heating up. Yeah. 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 Come on, boys. You're hot. Yeah. Three hundred dollars. A traditional English dish, primarily made from potatoes and cabbage, is bubble and what? A crackle. B pop. C squeak. D snap. I think it's I, I think it's squeak. Have you heard, or is that a movie? I um, just know I've heard that combo before. No, it, I, I, it's it's almost definitely squeak. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why yeah. did you say that? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's almost definitely squeak. Okay. I'm just I just wanted to just. Oh, because they're the ones with the rice bubbles things, aren't they? Snap, oh, crackle, they and pop. Oh, they are. See what they've done there. I mean, they're, we're yeah. They're trying to make us look like idiots. Yeah, they are. We'll look in the uh, C squeak. Squeak and, is yeah. locked in. Further trivia question for no money. Mm. What great Australian pop icon was known as Squeak? Squeak. Yeah. Red? John Paul <laughs> Young. John, John Paul, Paul Young. Young. John Paul Young is correct. I don't think he was thrown to you, Red. I think he actually thought you might have been Squeak. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Squeak is correct for $300. <laughs> great stuff. 
<laughs> this can also include ingredients such as bacon, leftover roast meat and other uh, leftover vegetables. It is the English dim sim in a lot of ways on a plate. Yeah, right. $500. Delicious. Which of these numbers is spelled incorrectly? Yeah, Come on, go. spelling boy. Yeah, yeah, wow. Leave it to me. 11th, B 12th, C 13th, D 14th. Shoot. Pretty sure it's... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm a bad sure, speller, so... I'm pretty, sure it's, I'm pretty sure it's B. B doesn't have the... I'm pretty sure B doesn't have the V in there. Oh, you're looking for an F, we need an F in the in 12th, aren't we? Is that what you're saying? Bloody hell. It's no. 12th. Third, it's, it is 12th. It's definitely... That's how you spell 11th. In the 11th, yeah, yeah. That's how you spell 13th. 13th. And 14th. That's how you... Yeah, that's how you spell 14th. 12th. I think 12th it's is spelled without... No, I don't think there's an F there either. I think it's just... It's 12th. I think it's just... T-W-E-L-T-H. I think that's how I'd spell it. Twelfth. It's twelfth. Twelfth. The twelfth. You just go straight no, to the twelfth man. It's the twelfth man. The twelfth man. Oh, oh, the way. Oh, the twelfth man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are, what are the twelve were you thinking of? It's, mate, it's, I think you're right with twelfth. I think, I think we both think there's an irregularity there. We've got different irregularities, which is concerning, but I think that B is, B is correct. Are you sure we shouldn't use a lifeline? Yeah, I'm pretty it, sure, man. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You're an expert in spelling, aren't you? Let's. Yeah. Come on. No. I well think said. You're second guessing We're going to lock in B. Oh no. Twelfth is correct for five hundred dollars. Oh, you <laughs> absolute. <laughs> you are. Oh. <laughs> the correct spelling yeah, is right. T W E L F. Snack. I need a snack after that. Oh, I bought a snack as well, actually, which is huge. The snacks backstage are wild. <laughs> All right, the thousand dollars next, or the first safe level. Here we go. Here we go. Do you want some water to wash that down with? I... On a standard monopoly board, what image is used to represent the electric company property? A. Lightning bolt. B. Power line. C. Light bulb. D. Power plug. Pretty sure it's C. You've been playing. You play Monopoly, don't you? I've been known. <laughs> so oh, I've got no idea. <laughs> so <laughs> um, for me, I mean, power line just makes sense to me. But that's just. What do you mean by well, if I was power line? Like, then it's going to have a card with a black cable running through it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 something a little bit more. But light bulb to me feels a bit more ideary, like you know. Hey, oh, it's not. It's definitely not lightning bulb. It's definitely not a power line. It's a light. It's a light bulb. It's definitely not a power I can see plug. It. It's a yellow on the old board. It's the yellow light bulb. It's the yellow light bulb. I can see it. Yeah, I trust you. I want a lock-in light bulb, please. Lock-in light bulb. It's correct for a thousand dollars. Yeah. Thousand bucks. Good okay. You're welcome, Gus. One of the two utilities. The other is Waterworks, which is represented by a tap. tap. Hey, now, what are you a qualified marriage celebrant? Yes, yes, true. How, many, yes. Uh, how often do you do that? Uh, not very often. Uh, and actually, while I'm on TV, 1-800-HAPPILY-EVER-AFTER. Give me a call. Is that the camera or am I looking? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to barrel it. I tried to barrel it. No, 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 wait, hang on, here, here he is. Give me a call, 1-800-HAPPILY-EVER-AFTER. There you go. Who um, thought that these two work in radio, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. Back with Will and Rudy right after this. <laughs> To who wants to be a millionaire? Will McMahon and Woody Whitelaw are Will and Woody from Kiss FM's afternoon show right around the country. Mm. Sorry, and before million... we go on, can we just can we get wardrobe out here? This guy's showing more peck than he is. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that shirt. Is that a bit? Is that not enough or too much? I think you might need. A... Is it too? Is, he, is it a bit sexy? The shirt. Let's go to the question, boys. Two thousand dollars. <laughs> Two thousand dollars. What is the meaning of the word asunder? A apart. B up high, C down low, D up close. I feel like uh, under, down low. No, no okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that, although hear me out. Yeah, I no, think the go first for thing it. I actually don't know. I, exactly. I think the first thing you think when you go asunder is down low, and that's a trick. I think that's a bit of a trick. You know what I mean? For the uh, novice players like myself. 
So I think that's a bit of a, uh, what do we call that one? A red herring. If two things are asunder, they might be apart. Yeah, there's an expression, I, I, I think, I thought it was far and sunder, but maybe that's just because I've minced the words together. It might be far and asunder, but far and sunder means like, um, you say like they're thrown far and sunder, which means they're thrown apart from each other. So, yeah, sure. So for my, my lo- I think close is, is out of it. Okay. So I think we can knock out up close in that logic. Now, with the same logic though, I feel like it could be up high or apart because mm-hmm. you could be thrown far and up high to create that sense of separation and distance, which is what the expression denotes. Mm. If we're not sure, I got a little bit of advice back of house. Yeah. Saying that if you're going to use your swappy, yeah. go early. We're only at a thousand. I reckon if we swap this puppy out, we might get an easy question. Because you don't seem, no offence, but you just don't seem certain. What do you think? Come on. I reckon it's a part, but yeah, no. I, do I risk all our money on that? Um, yeah, I, oh shit, I nearly said we should. Uh, nah, what do you want to do, man? Jeez, that was a big flip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sorry. happy sitting back there. Sorry, uh, well, sorry, sorry. So what's the saying? A far and a sunder. Far and sunder. Far, far and sunder. Well, apparently, I thought it was just sunder, but I think it's far and sunder. Far and sunder. Yep. A sunder. You know what? I always go with what you say, and it hasn't got me oh. to a bad spot so far. I'm happy to go with you. Let's go apart. Let's yeah. do it. Let's just bloody do it. Yeah. Say the words. Locking A. Uh, now, Woody, yeah. when you were doing your marriage celebrant exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the term asunder, or the word asunder, appear as the pivotal line in a marriage ceremony? Let's not put this on national TV, Ed, because I might have my licence <laughs> ripped up. Uh, maybe it's updated since you got married. No, Ed. well, this is pretty traditional. I think it was... Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but God brings together, let no man cast asunder. No, I don't remember that at all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which means let no man separate or throw apart. Yes! Yeah. Woo! Shocking for my yeah. career. <laughs> <laughs> And we're you might need, you might need some of the cash. Do we get off gas? I don't know. I don't know if you're a man of the cloth, so that's maybe not it. But it, as in to be torn asunder, meaning to be ripped Huge. apart. To yeah. ripped Huge. Apart. Four thousand oh, dollars, three lifelines still in play. Let's Here we go. go. It's amazing how you question yourself, isn't it? It is. What is the name of the clown in Stephen King's novel? It. Pennywise. Sorry. Pennywise. Sorry, I don't. don't <laughs> no, we like that. B. Pinhead. C. Leatherface. D. Candyman. Lock in A. Pennywise. In. Correct, four thousand dollars. What a rock! Come on. Three more movies. Three more movies. Nice man. That was really good. Thank you. Three life ones. We're on. Eight thousand. Three life ones. We're in good shape. Yeah. What is the human? Sorry. Where in the human body is the pituitary gland located? A. Armpit. B. Brain. C. Chest. D. Groin. Exercise science is also your bag. I uh, I got through half an exercise science degree yet. Oh well, you're the man then. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's not the brain, and it's n- I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the chest. I reckon it's either the armpit or the groin. Why are you knocking out brain so quick? There just isn't a pituitary gland in there. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good reasoning. <laughs> Pretty good reasoning. Pretty well, good possibly, reasoning. But, 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 but they're not. But they're okay. No, I know. You get, yeah. yeah, you get no, glands yeah, here. Yeah, 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 you get glands here, and you can get a gland. So down it's there, lymphatic my system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if you've got a swollen pituitary gland, it's up. It's. it's yeah. Uh, look, I'm going to be honest. My first inkling was armpit. You've got three lifelines sitting there. Should we just switch it out? You want to swap it out? Yeah, because again, I had a bit of back of house yeah, chat. Yeah, no, you've said this before. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's. Um, <laughs> We'll um, swap it out, Eric. Out, swap, use the lifeline. Let's get rid of that. Uh, what would you have gone for, boys? Armpit. Um, brain is the answer. <laughs> That's gone. Switch. Forget about it. Hey, good switch. Good, good switch. switch. Good call. Back of house advice. Electric car manufacturer Tesla Inc. is headquartered in which of these countries? A. Germany. B. Japan. 
see USA, the United Kingdom. Where's okay. the Where's the Muskman from? Well, he's actually South African originally. Jeez. Um, and he, but then he moved to the States because he started PayPal, and then he sold that. Um, and I'm pretty sure uh, there's a guy called Tim Urban who writes a blog called Wait But Why, and mm -hmm. he's the only person, that, like journalist, that Elon Musk has led inside his headquarters, and he helicoptered him, and I'm pretty sure he lives in New York. So if you're helicoptering someone, you're in the same country. I know this is roundabout logic, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure it's USA. I'm pretty sure. Like, Do you want to just go through the others? Definitely not in Germany. I'd be really surprised if it was anything but the US. That's All like right, it. boys. Yeah, What's I, the think we, I, think, I think we should lock in CUSA. Lock do it, it mate. in? Yeah, mate, do it. Lock in in Elon Musk, who's recently become the richest man in the world, is headquartered in the United States of America for $8,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good thing here. Going well. There's a good feel. Would have been some helicopter flight from New York to California, yeah, it's but a, anyway. It's a, wild, it's a wild story. You might have flown into somewhere and then flown in and yeah, then yeah, I think, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Good story. Yeah. 16 grand is next. Let's take a break. Red Simon's yet to come, but these boys are flying at the moment. They are hot. It's We're on. We're about as on as Woody's nipples are in this top. You can there see what we're going One million dollars. It's a family show. <laughs> <laughs> from KISS FM, that is Will McMahon and Woody Whitelaw, ready to go for 16000 and you've still got me to help you, and 50-50 to get as far as you can, boys. Two off, Huge 32 way. grand. Let's go for it. Come on. Yep. And we are playing for the Gotcha for Life Foundation. Let's yep. go. The name of which of these cities translates into English as Northern <sighs> Capital? A. Bangkok. Oh. B. Kuala Lumpur. C. Jakarta. D. Beijing. Shruth. That is definitely not my specialty, but I really want to hear what you're thinking, Ajax, so I can laugh at you. That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so which one of these ones? You're good at geography. Which one of these I'm ones not, is quite not. Geography north. is definitely not my specialty. The name of which of these cities translates into English as northern capital? That's which the question. Which translates into English is not. So, so, so the point is, it could be a very old name. Oh, okay, bang. Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> well, hang on. Northern capital, Kuala Lumpur. Like it's yeah. two. Like it's two. It's <laughs> just stop. But it's two. It's two words, and it's north. You know what I mean? That. that no, the that's syntax, The syntax. It's two words. Northern capital. It's the only one with two but, words. But we know, we don't know. Like in Thai, for example, Bang could mean north, and Kok could mean capital. Mm. So unlikely. We have, it's so unlikely. So. Do you, are you saying, just because there's two words, Kuala Lumpur, I mean, yeah. Translates into English as... Are we worried that Beijing could be... No, okay, so actually I know something about Beijing. Beijing used to be called Peking. As um, in Peking Yes, duck, like yes, Peking duck, not, yeah. that's the old name for it. We only use 50-50, knock two out, so we've got a chance. I don't know what we're going to gain from it. Like, because at the end, right now, you can throw a blanket over Bangkok, Beijing, and Jakarta. If we're being honest, we've got no idea. KL's only standing out because we it's go got from two one words. in four to one in two. True. And also, and if KL's they might left, bang out. They might, yeah. If KL's left, we go for KL. But we may as well get the 50-50 just to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 50-50. Yeah. Let's use a lifeline. Done. Two incorrect answers disappear off the screen. <sighs> One or the other. What do you think? Let's go for Beijing. For no reason. <laughs> there's been absolutely no logic. But there's you, no logic in anything I think there's here. a reason that you knew a fact about Beijing, and I think there's something out there that's telling oh us. Oh, God, don't take us there. Let's go Beijing. Do it, man. You're locking in there. Oh, my God. All right. Um, no, nah, do it. Let's do it. OK, let's, do let's it. lock in D, Beijing, please, Eddie. Oh man, I didn't like that look. You twisted your mouth. <laughs> you went for Beijing based on what? Will's fact. I didn't have a fact. I knew yeah. what the. What well, the fact that called. you go to the flower drum and like peeking duck or something. <laughs> yeah, that was it. It is delicious. Beijing in the pancake. is correct for. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
sorry, Red. You have to hold that cap. The boys. The boys are sticking around like a bad smell. <laughs> okay, one lifeline, which is asked me, 32 grand. Next question, you're guaranteed if you get it right. Let's go. Here we go. Australian Gillian Rolton won back-to-back -back Olympic gold medals in which sport? A, rowing. B, archery. C, equestrian. D, diving. All right, now, before you say anything here, mm -hmm. I'm, I just want to say I'm really happy that we've got Herb Ask Ed because sports, that's his bag. Yeah, that is that is very true. Super tight. I'm pretty that's... happy about that. Uh, because Let's try and do it without him, though, because, you know, let's, let's flex. Um... What would Australia have gone back to back in? Rowing? I think or... we should ask him. Okay, let's ask. <laughs> Are you going to use your lifeline? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna... Are yeah. you going to ask the host? Yeah, yes. we'd like to ask yes. the host. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here's what I think. What was that noise you made? When? When I asked the question. That's oh, it. Oh, you think it's equestrian? Yep. Oh. Final answer is equestrian. Final okay. answer, Grant. Lock in equestrian. Lock in equestrian. Yeah. Bang, 32. Yes. Yes. yes! Here we go. Can we high-five you, Ed, or Coke? Uh, uh, well, then let's do a uh, COVID high-five. Hey, uh, there we here go. go. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> $32,000. Guzzy Woolen, 32 grand for Gotcha for Life. Hey, get 64 free hit. That let's is go. huge. Let's, on, let's go. go. Let's go. Here Come go. on, yeah. boys. There's five to go for a million. Elizabeth Woolridge Grant is better known by what stage name? A, Dua Lipa. B, Lady Gaga. C, Lizzo. D, Lana Del Rey. Elizabeth Woolridge Grant is a very English name. Yeah, isn't okay. It? Yeah, What's, it is. is La Lana Del Rey's English, isn't she? I don't know. What's one of her songs? She did that Fifty Shades song. Oh, you she's know that very, song. You know that she's song. very slow. Uh, the summer, you know, the summertime. Too. I feel that summertime. Yeah, summertime. summertime. Elizabeth. At the end of the day, Lizzo is a shortening of Elizabeth, and we're idiots if we discount but her. For... Elizabeth Woolridge Grant. Yeah, no, is, I know, is, is, I know. Is so Lana Del Rey. Is it? I think Lizzo's. I, like, I just think it's too obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it, it's it just, would be a very just, good it's, red it's, herring. It's, it's it's like it's almost like the you know some of the the joke answer. I'm, yeah, that's a, that's actually a good point. Lizzo, yeah. Elizabeth. I, I, okay. Woolwich Grant. All right. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Well, you flipped it on me. You could really, you really convinced me. You so did you, a good job of it. So you, you were more Lizzo. No, I think you pointed something out there. It's a thirty-two thousand dollars question. It's so obviously Lizzo, Elizabeth Lizzo, mm. that it is Lana Del Rey. I'm with you. I back you. Lock one in. Ed. We're locking in D. Oh my God. Bad idea. What do you want? Just use that after I locked it in. What are you doing? I regret it. You have won 64. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 we had the boys that nobody wanted. Nobody thought it'd be here at 64 grand. It was a dumb radio bit, and now. <laughs> Hey, can we have the check? Uh, like, can we just uh, have it? Can just, we hold uh, it? Hey, don't go the early crow, boys. Okay, okay. sorry about that. Sorry. Getting... Simon's fans are furious. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, I'm going to write a check for 64000 Yes. Okay. But I'm also going to show you a question for 125000 Oh, God, this is the game, isn't Come it? Come on, here we go. Here we go. $125,000 question. Written by Samuel Taylor Coleridge in 1798 is the poem. Bloody hell. Frost at what? A dawn. B midday. C dusk. D midnight. Before the suggestions were even read out, mm. I said dawn. And I'm saying that as in that's wrong because that's frost at dawn is such a common thing to say. Oh, the frost at dawn. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have we said it? No, no, I know. I was going to do this morning. You picked me up, but right? so that's right. Thank, thank you. What are you? Uh, that frosted dawn. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just boom. Frost at dusk. I mean, frost at midday would never happen. Would never happen. And maybe Sam's whole Sam's whole thing was, you know, that's my whole point. It was a bit of frostiness at midday, which never happens. Samuel Taylor Coleridge. 
the panel is frosted what? So that is a check that says Will and Woody, $64,000 for your charity, gotcha for life. Do you want to grab it? Or do, if we take it, we're, are we out? You take it, but you can, can tell me it. when you're out. You can hold yeah, it, yeah, okay. hold it and look at it. Got Ed's signature. <laughs> I can't conscionably no, no. throw away $30,000. For so any for let's, anything, let's, this is this this cause is so close to my let's, heart. Let's walk away with sixty four thousand dollars. We'll go with sixty four yeah, grand. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, you've right, won sixty four thousand dollars. Will and Woody from Kiss FM. Great job. Great job. Way more than anyone thought. Let's be What would you have gone for? Dusk, dawn, or oh, dawn, midday, I reckon, dusk, I reckon, midnight. I reckon. I reckon. I, I reckon I would have gone for a midnight option. Had you gone for that, I would have said the next question is worth two hundred and fifty thousand oh dollars. Midnight was correct. Lord, no, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ed. Uh, sorry, you Gus. Won, you won sixty-four thousand, boys. Well done. That was sensational. Congratulations, Ed. Thanks, Great mate. Applause. Thanks so much. And then there was one. Red, let's play for one million dollars. Come on, buddy, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you, Ed. Welcome back, great man, I say. Hey, who are you playing with? Um, I'd like to be able to say he was my friend, but I've just been stuck with him for about 40 years. <laughs> Mr. Wilbur Wilde. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to nine, Wilbur Wilde! <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Wilbur, great to see you, buddy. You too, Ed. Uh, welcome. I've been looking forward to this all night, guys. Great to have you back here. Great to have two absolute legends of music and television here together. Let me introduce officially one of Australia's favourite faces. Red Simons is a musician, a columnist, a TV and a radio personality. He was the lead guitarist of legendary rock band Skyhooks. He was the sharp-tongued judge of red faces on Hey Hey at Saturday and was one of the ABC Radio's most successful breakfast radio hosts ever. He appeared on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Me back in 2000 and was set to be, as I mentioned, the first million dollar winner in the world until this. <laughs> B, architecture. Lock it in. No lifeline. Lock it in. Locked in architecture. Red, you've just lost $218,000. It was sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Mate, it was fantastic. It was great television. It was an amazing night. If I can fail and makes others happy, then I'm happy too. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside him is fellow Hey Hey at Saturday alumni, the great Wilbur Wilde, who became a household name as the show's resident saxophonist for 15 years. But how about this? One of Australia's most loved musicians, he performed with the sensational old 55 and then the legendary Joe Joe Zepp and the Falcons, huh. as well as treading the boards with the new Rocky Horror Show and so many other shows over the years, but has also been an absolute stalwart when it comes to philanthropy, appearing for anybody, basically, who asks over the years. We really absolutely give you a round of applause tonight for both of you guys. Great to have you here. It's an absolute privilege, to be honest. Uh, let's talk about the variety, and uh, I know this is something that's very close to your heart, Wilbur. Well, look, I've done over the years about eight or nine variety bashes, which is a lot of fun, but at the root of it all, it's for the kids, for um, iPads that we give away on the bash to the uh, outback schools and uh, to sunshine coaches for just transport. Yeah, it's, it's just a great thing. And it's a wonderful thing, and both of you are donating all the money tonight to that charity. Boys... Let's have a crack at $1 million for Variety right after this.
Welcome back to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I have waited since 2000 for this moment. <laughs> We've got 15 questions to go all the way. We have three lifelines. Ask me if you like 50-50 and switch. No time limit, guys. You've got as long as you need. Leave any time, as we just saw with Will and Woody. They were able to take $64,000 out the door. Guys, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> For one hundred dollars, good luck, gentlemen. Let's do it for one hundred bucks. An expression describing something of a particular irritation to someone is like a red rag to a what? A prize fighter. B flame. C bull. D fashion victim. C bull. Lock it in. Lock it in. Please. Correct for one hundred dollars. We're away. The phrase comes from the false belief that bulls are enraged by the colour red. $200. By definition, a person described as rolling in it is which of these? A. Energetic. B. Wealthy. C. Smelly. D. Making pizza. Rolling that it. one. Oh, yes. It doesn't work, actually, Will, there are a few. Oh, no, no, I'm just, just, oh, just pointing, pointing it out. Yeah, I'm just pointing so it out. Yeah, we're it. not talking about a dog rolling in it. It's a person. So, be wealthy, lock it in. It's in, and you're heading towards that wealth, $200. Congratulations. Well played. This senior partner here, that's what I'm saying. Do you think it's that one? Or, you know. So you're the advisor, are you? Um, look, generally, things work best if I just stop helping completely, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> <True>. $300 <laughs> question. Here we go. An Australian children's TV character from play school is the toy named Big Who? A. Jim. B. Ted. C. Pig. D. Bear. I'm thinking that. What was that that you pointed at for those? I at pointed home? to B. Big, Big Ted. Ted. Uh, you're right. You sure? Well, it's a toy named Big Ted. Is he not a bear? Is he not a teddy bear? I haven't watched Play School for as long as you haven't watched Play School. Uh, okay, you want to go with you want to go with that? Yeah, if we're going to bomb out, we might as well get out of here quick. Nice. <laughs> yes. When's your next gig? Oh, I've got to rush off to it actually after this. It's in August. Oh, fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us on the show because it was pretty much for both of us this or pornography. <laughs> well, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Professional wrestling, I've still got up my sleeve. Oh, OK. Um, and we're locking in Big Ted. Yeah, I just think oh, it's no, Big It's not Ted. Big Jim, it's not Big Pig, it's not Big Bear. Yeah, all right, no, Big Bear. Lock, lock in, in B. B. Thank you. Bang, Big Ted is correct for $300. Oh, talk about negotiation. Well, we milked that for time, didn't we? It wasn't funny either. No. Appreciate it. Let's plough on. $500, let's go. A common term describing ruffled or unkempt hair is a bird's what? A nest. B I C cage D feather. I'm thinking. That. I would think so. Yes, a nest. Yes, you can lock it in. And Eddie. I shall do so and tell you you've won five hundred dollars. Correct. Well played. Next one's for the first safe level, a thousand dollars. I'll feel better after this. Yeah, this oh, is the one. Too. This is the relief. This is. Yes. I'm not. Uh, I haven't lost my. Got to remember to breathe. breathe Here we go. In the sentence. Arthur quickly jumped out of the bathtub. What is the adverb? The adverb. A. Arthur. B. Quickly. C. Jumped. D. Bathtub. Take your time. Could we there? switch it for a, a harder one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Added to the verb, jumped, is the adverb quickly. B. Quickly is locked in, and that is 100% correct. Of course, it's for $1,000. Thank you very much. Everybody, thank you. Here we go for $2,000. Three lifelines in play. Go. Which of these sitcoms is not named after the actor who plays its title character? A. Roseanne. B. Seinfeld. C. Sybil. D. Frazier. Well, Jerry Seinfeld. Yes. Roseanne Barr. Yeah. Frazier. Somebody Frazier. Yeah, uh, Kelsey Grammer. Yes. Thank you. Oh, hang on. Now, is his character Frazier, though? Is his character Frazier? Kelsey Grammer. Sybil Shepherd. Named Shepard. after the actor. 
Okay. Hang on, let's let's look at the question. Okay. Yeah, Which yeah. of these sitcoms is not named after the actor, actor themselves? Frasier is not named after the actor who plays its title character. And Can I say those two words, three words? Yeah. But is Sybil? Was that Sybil Shepherd? It doesn't matter. Okay. Frasier, D. Lock it in. Correct for two thousand dollars. <laughs> Frasier, as you said, starred Kelsey Grammer, the character Frasier Crane. Roseanne starred Roseanne Barr as Roseanne Connor. Seinfeld starred Jerry Seinfeld as himself, and Sybil was Sybil Shepherd as Sybil Sheridan. Okay, right. Well, yeah. Four thousand dollars. Well played, guys. How many standard metric cups are in a two-liter bottle of milk? A4, B6, C8, D10. It's a standard metric yeah, cup. Yeah, exactly. Reckon. What is a standard metric cup? 500 mil? Yeah, that's quite a lot. Six, six, okay, 500 mil is eight. No, it's four. 250 mils in a cup. 500 mil is. Uh, 200 mil, you know, there's, there's 10 in a, that's, that's a 10, 200 mils in a two litre, yeah? You're the one with the mathematics, mathematics uh, degree from Melbourne University. It doesn't sound like enough. You want to take the 50 50? Um, Do you want to ask Eddie? 10 bucks, they'll give us C or D on 50 50. Or should we just ask Eddie at this stage? No, we'll go the 50-50. Let's go 50-50. Can't switch it, by the way. Go on 50-50. Go on 50-50. Bang. Uh, it's C. Lock it in. Have to. Yes. Bang. Correct for $4,000. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's all right. Uh, standard metric cup in Australia is 250 millilitres or a quarter of a litre, so two litres yes. would contain eight yes. cups. $8,000 okay. question. The 1986 comedy film Three Amigos does yeah. not star which of these actors? Yeah. A. Steve Martin. B. Billy Crystal. C. Martin Short. D. Chevy Chase. I think it's this one. So do I. Which is this one? I think it's B. Billy Crystal, who was not, who does not star in Three Amigos. Go on, you do it. I think we should lock in B. Billy Crystal, Eddie. Lock in. Correct for $8,000. Well played, boys. Sixteen thousand dollars to Lifeline still in play. Commonly said to have originated on the Caribbean island of Trinidad is which of these dances? A. Tango. No. B. Jive. No. C. Limbo. Maybe. D. Foxtrot. No. I think it's that one. Uh, we would like to lock in C. Limbo. In. Lock it in. Correct for sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, dating back to the late eighteen hundreds, limbo dancing became popular in the USA in the nineteen fifties. Right, they drop the bar, we lift the bar. Next question for thirty-two thousand guaranteed. You can take the sixteen if you don't like it. Two lifelines to play. Go. Which of these words comes from a French term meaning present yourselves? A. Hey, déjà vu. B, entrepreneur. C, fait accompli. D, rendezvous. Yeah, I would be inclined to agree with you in that regard. Should we just lock it in and be done with it? Yeah. Or should we go to another commercial? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going for, boys? Uh, You're welcome. We'd like to lock in B, entrepreneur. Locked please. in. You have a guarantee. 
$32,000 in the pocket. Well played. Sensational. Oh, sorry. I was away with the fairies as well. I thought it was exactly that, and I've gone that you've won $32,000. Uh, we're all wrong. I would have been asked and I would have said entrepreneur had you come to me. Rendezvous. We probably should have switched it because the answer we is rendezvous. It's a rendezvous somewhere. Yeah, of course. The older you are, the less you know. Fantastic. There's something for us all to take away. <laughs> Thank you, Red. Thank, Thank you, Wilbur. That's the end of the show. And uh, the guys won $1,000 each to go to Variety. Congratulations to everybody who's been part of the show. It's just been absolutely fantastic. All up at our two nights of celebrity. Who wants to be a millionaire? $164,000 won. Thanks for watching. Who wants to be a millionaire? Good night, everyone.